What's going on guys, Derek here, and this is an old mob design that I had. And I have advanced forward in my mob designing powers, and I created this. I'm not quite done with it, I want to show you guys how it worked before I finished it. So I got this side sort of done here, and let's take a look inside. See, sp spider disabled, mobs can't spawn on pressure plates, no biggie here. And let's go over here. This is what it looks like without the ceiling on it. And it is upside down half slabs so that when the water flows, the mobs will fit in between this half slab and this ceiling, but Enderman won't spawn. And the water will push them. As you can see, there, there's water all along here. And let's turn it on and see what it looks like. There you go, that's why it has that, how can I say this, that unique, jaggy design, almost like a zipper. The only places that it's not a straight current is on the corners, but if you see, if I just sit on it and not move my mouse or anything, I still get pushed off. So it still works all the way around, like the entire thing. So let's show you the wiring. Here's the wiring. It just repeats underneath, as you can see. It's pretty simple. Only difference is I have a. On the bottom, I have it like this. So, yeah, that's the only difference. Yeah, I'll keep it like this for. Symmetry. So, it's pretty simple. The wire powers this block, and the block powers the piston. And the repeater receives the power, and powers this block, powers the piston. The redstone wire receives the power, powers the block, powers the, the repeater. But I c could not go like this, because to send power through blocks, the repeater has to either, or to get power through blocks, the repeater either has to be setting the power, or the repeater has to be receiving the power. And that's how I have it set up. Pretty efficient wiring. And it's compact. So I'm, I like this design a lot. So, I'm going to be showing you what it looks like when it's done and this is going to be a video response to Doc M's newest Dear Doc for his mob trap themed video responses so yep so I'll see you guys when I'm done with this whole first layer and I'll sort of explain what I'm thinking when I'm gonna build this next layer so see you guys in a second I gotta say guys that the worst part of doing this is definitely having to pay having to place the upside down half slabs because you have to make an entire layer on top of it and then go underneath and place the half slabs because you can't just place the half slabs on against the other half slabs because they just go right side up, not upside down. So the most tedious and annoying part is placing the upside down half slabs because you have to uh, make the entire ceiling first and then you have to place the half slabs and this design takes a lot a lot of supplies but it's definitely going to be very efficient because if you look at each pad or yeah I'll, I'll count each one of these as a pad and you just have to look at this and count the number of yeah whatever pressure plates one two three four five six seven eight nine ten and then you just count the number of little end points there are so one two three four five six seven eight 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Multiply it by 10, that's 160 spawning spot, uh, spawning 
spaces per pad. So we we have four pads set up here. So that's three twenty per section. So this is one. This whole thing is one section. This is one section. So that's six forty in two sections. And then I'm gonna have four sections total. So that's twelve eighty spawning pads or spawning spaces. So I that's a ridiculous amount. I mean. Etho likes to say that 1,000 is the sweet spot. Like, that's the amount you need for a good, a good and like efficient mob sp spawner. So this exceeds that by about 20%. So this is gonna be a really great design once I have it finished. So see you guys in a second when I'm done with this. Now, something that I really like about this mob spawner is that it's really sleek. If you look at it here, it's only two blocks, actually not two blocks, inside it's only two blocks high, but outside it's only one, two, three, four. Four blocks high. There's a lot of stuff in there. At least, uh, probably one of my favorite parts about this thing. So next I'm going to show you guys how I did this. I've already got it all set up here. Here's how I've got them wired up on the side. Nothing too spectacular. This is off. So, when you start, you want to have your wire going into the piston. So, just go like that and just repeat this little zigzag pattern. And when you've got that complete, I did first, I did this, the wiring. So, just fluctuate and I think that that can be used in this example you just fluctuate in between the repeaters and your redstone and <coughs> when you're done it all of them should be powered till the end so let's get this don't need that Let's get this going. Yeah, bad placing of blocks. So you see they're all powered. And then get your normal piston. You don't need sticky pistons. There's another reason I like this. go and I put blocks in between here to guard the wires and I'm really happy about the new sandstone blocks they, they look nice together when you combine them like use these for like aesthetic aesthetic like I'll use them in small numbers use these as floors and the normal sandstone blocks as like walls because I don't like the way these look as walls. It's, it doesn't work for me. But that looks better as a wall. So, once you've got that done, the ground of each level is the same level as the wiring. So, just keep mimi mimicking the zigzag pattern that I that you had and if you're making if you had yeah if you're making this with me you'll have it underneath so just keep the zigzag pattern going and once you're done with that well you don't have to do this after you're done with that just for the water just place a block on top of the guards you put on the wiring. And I like using half slabs because you sort of have to. Otherwise it'll mess up how it works down here. Because if these are normal blocks then you'll get stuck right here. 
So I use half slabs like that. And then you fill them in with water. Keep this going and repeat your design for the pressure plates and the half slabs underneath. So I'll be done when I'm well, I'll be back when I'm done with this floor and I'll show you how to do the design or the half slab and pressure plate pattern. So see you guys in a second. Alright guys, I'm back and something that I'm realizing now is that you can lower this one level. I don't know how I didn't see that before, so uh, I really regret that seeing now because I've got all this down and these have slabs around the pistons, those are pains to place. So I'm going to have to drop the floor one level and redo the wiring. And I'll show you guys that when I'm done and then we'll get back doing this. So yeah. and I'll get to work. See you guys. And I should probably mention that one of the biggest reasons that I'm doing this is because spiders will be able to spawn in between here and here, I think. So, yeah. And it will take up less space. And we're all about efficiency. So, yeah. Let's ah, work. It's going to take hours. You guys only see it as a couple of minutes, but this thing is probably taking me a couple hours, five, that probably when I'm done it'll take about five hours to make, and then the thinking process of, of it, yeah, it's a, it took a lot of work, so, yeah, I hope you guys enjoy the video when I'm done with it, I'm not done though, so, yeah, see you guys in a second. Alright guys, so I've brought down the floor, I haven't placed the floor, but I've brought it down, and, yeah, I found out that you cannot place wire on half slabs, even if, even if they're upside down. So I got lucky that I have these here. So that's good about this design. So now we all have, now all we have to do is put the pistons in, put the water in, do the floor. Now the pistons are the easier part because you just place them. <laughs> the floor is going to be pretty not tough, just time intensive, tedious, repetitive. All those words fit the floor because it's just constant placing of blocks. Oh, let's, where's my water? Here it is. Get some water in here. Not like that. Yay! <laughs> oh gosh. So, pretend you didn't see that. I'll clean this up and yeah, I'll start on the. I'll show you guys about the floor when I'm done. So see you guys in a second again. All right, guys. So I've gotten part of the floor placed down, and to start the pattern of half slabs, I like to think that the corner closest or the corner for I don't know this corner right here, the corner in front closest to the side with the redstone. So. Just place it like this, keep that pattern going all the way across, and then you do one right here too, and right here, and spiders will not spawn out of that, like, you don't have to do it exactly, like, the pattern, just as long as there's only one block spaces for spiders to spawn, because they, they need a 4x4 space to spawn, and mobs can't spawn on half slabs, so that's all you're doing when you're placing half slabs. Now, when you're done placing all your half slabs, just fill it all in with pressure plates. Now what this does is it keeps the water at their head level so that it doesn't flow onto the floor and cause messes and yeah, because there's half slabs, it'll get stuck in the half slabs too. So you keep it at head level. And it's, I might, this might not be true, but I think it might push them faster. But I 
again, that might not be true. I, I just sort of feel it. Bias towards it, you could say. So, yeah, I'm gonna finish this up, like the whole mob spawner, and I just hit my mouse there. I'm gonna finish it up, and I'll sh show you guys what it looks like when I'm done. So, yeah, see you guys in a second. Alright, guys, I am done. <laughs> you wanna see it? You wanna see it? Here it is. 1280 blocks of spawning space, I do believe. Yep. I'm really happy with this line, actually. Like, really, really happy. I like the way I put the half slabs all around to make, give it some, you know, color and character. Oh, it's almost, it almost looks like it's, like, in chains. So, yeah, this is the mob trap design. If you go back here, I have it hooked up to a little piston timer. So it'll go off any, every five minutes. Pretty easy to do. Have, uh, well, I'll, I'll go here. Like, here's the torch that powers all the pistons. And there's wire running to it from atop this torch. So... Yeah, it just goes across like that. The torch powers the dispenser. The dispenser puts any th any really material that you have a lot of on a pressure plate. The pressure plate powers this wire, wire, which powers this, which unpowers the torch so that it doesn't spit out. But when you take it off, I'll show you guys, it'll replenish itself and the trap will go off. So let's get this. And oh wow, it's not going off. Oh, I know what happened. There's this glitch in this game where the torch will burn out, and I saw it. <laughs> See, it burns out. Hopefully it doesn't burn out. Get my redstone back. Always have trouble finding things. Yeah, it's just burning out too quick. I'll, I'll fiddle with design, but I'll show you just I'll just show you guys how it works. Get a lever. goes off. It's powered. Mobs get pushed to the middle. They all fall. You can all see. It all went off. So let's go check how many mobs I killed. Pretty good amount for being on for like 15 seconds. And under here, you would make a carriage like this. Well, I'm gonna call it a carriage or a catcher, whatever organizer, like this. Or it doesn't have to be exactly like this, but all it does, you have water streams underneath of it, and it puts, or it, yeah, it puts all the mobs into a confined area so in this case I could write it to a 1x2 tube pretty simple to do and it lags this that's why I don't like this design it lags too much yeah it's a pretty simple like thing that anyone could do so that's that you would just put it underneath this if you wanted them to be in, or in an organized place like if you wanted them to be in an XP farm, you could do that. Or if you, yeah, <laughs> that's the only reason you would do it. Or if you wanted all the drops in one spot, you could have it, just a couple of the uses of it. Now, 
something that I haven't shown you guys yet, but this has been in my mind for a little bit. I'm going to do something like this. Let's get a button out and this out. Like this. So their fall damage resets when they're falling. Because if they fall from up here, they'll take damage, but that stops them. So, definitely going to incorporate that to this design. And how that works is, the, you know, you can climb vines, and the button just stops it from growing. Simple. So, yeah, this is my mob trap design. I think I'm going to call it the jigsaw. Yeah, give it the jigsaw. So, yeah, this has been the Jigsaw. Hope you guys have found the video enjoying, en enjoying, yeah, and, yeah, hope you guys enjoy it, tell your friends about it. So, yeah, this has been Derek, and I'm out.